Okay, so welcome everybody again to our Thursday Night Live. If you are seeing me from the for the first time, my name is Kendra. I'm the founder of the 180 Collection. And if you are someone that is frustrated with hair loss and products that do not work, you are in the right place, okay? Most of the time, many of us get so caught up on using product after product after product. The products aren't working, we get frustrated. Right. And so what we really need is a holistic solution. All right. So sometimes the the issue with your hair loss or your hair health is a symptom of a bigger problem. And usually that problem lies somewhere in your mindset, in your habits and your nutrition. Rarely is the product the problem. OK, so no judgment here. If you are just here to listen in and see if you can get some good information, I welcome you. I thank you for joining. So tonight we are talking about 10 ingredients, okay? 10 ingredients for healthy hair. We're gonna talk about the types of hair that benefit from these 10 ingredients that we're gonna cover. And we are going to um, talk about some hair conditions that see the best results from these ingredients. I'm going to give you some usage, uh, usage tips, some practical tips to use these ingredients. We're going to do a Q&A, a recap, and then we are going to wrap it up. So as you know, there are many causes for hair loss, okay? We got hormonal changes, for example, menopause, stress and lifestyle factors. We are all super busy, okay? Um, medical conditions. You have the medications that you're taking may be leading to or affecting your hair growth. You have things like alopecia, your hair care practices, the things that we do to our hair can also actually cause hair loss, all right? Things like excessive heat styling, using chemicals, using or wearing hairstyles that are too tight or don't fit, you know, our hair condition. And it causes more stress on our hair follicles and we can start to see hair loss, okay? so. Knowing what ingredients to use is very important, okay? Especially if you are dealing with hair loss issues or hair health issues or scalp issues, you definitely need to know the products that you should use, the products that will benefit you, okay? Because not every natural ingredient is created equal. Not every supplement is created equal, all right? So you got your oils and butters, you got, um, sprays and gels and all of these things that are not meant for every single hair type all right all hair care products are not universal <laughs> okay so let's remember that so i'm here to kind of guide you through the um ingredients that you probably hear about a lot i've talked to or talked about a lot of these ingredients um, on these lives but tonight i really want to kind of go into more detail so that you'll get a better understanding of you know, maybe this is something that you can add to your current regimen. Um, this is something that you should be looking for when you purchase hair care products for yourself. OK, so we're going to go ahead and get started because I have a pretty long list. We're doing 10 ingredients. I promise you, you are going to get so much value. Um, and definitely at the end of this live, I want you guys to share because this is information that we all need. All right. So first ingredient we're going to look at is coconut oil. I know that we have all heard of coconut oil. It's something that many people um, use in hair products, using skin products, you can cook with it. So many benefits, all right? But we're specifically talking about hair. And one of the benefits of coconut oil is it's very moisturizing. It helps to reduce protein loss and it helps to prevent damage. So let's start with the hair types that benefit the most from coconut oil. So like I said, it's excellent for moisturizing and hydrating hair. Um, it's one of the only, one of the very few oils that penetrate the hair shaft. Why is this important? Because most oils and butters just sit on top and you would have to incorporate some type of heat to open your cuticles so that you can get the um, oils and butters in or the moisture in. Coconut oil is a little bit different because it actually penetrates the hair shaft, okay? So it penetrates your hair strands. When I say hair shaft, I'm talking about the strands. The individual strands of your hair are also called the hair shaft, okay? Um, so this helps it to provide a little bit more deeper conditioning. 
It helps to produce the protein loss. We talked about protein, like the keratin is the main protein in your hair strands. You definitely don't want to lose that because then your hair starts to get very brittle and um, dry and hard. Okay. Um, so this makes the hair, helps to make the hair softer and smoother. So if you are a curly, coily, girly, <laughs> if you have type three or type four hair and your hair is tend to be more on the drier side, um, it's usually because the natural oils that our scalp produces may in some cases have a, have a harder time making its way from the scalp down through the, to the ends of your hair. So just imagine if you have hair that's really, really curly, right? Or really wavy or really coily. The job of your hair's natural sebum is to moisturize your entire hair strand, not just your scalp. So sometimes if our hair is really, really tight or really, really coily, it's kind of hard to get it down, to get all the way down to the tips. Okay. So these types of hair, type three and type four can typically run on the drier side, not all the time. All right. But coconut oil will definitely help you if you are, if your hair is more curly, if it's more frizzy, if you want to help with a little bit of defining your curls, coconut oil will help with that. Just remember to use it in moderation, especially if you have fine or medium or fine, thin, fine hair, any oil or any butter. If you have fine hair, you're going to use it in moderation. And why is that? Because if you use a lot, it's going to weigh your hair down. Your hair is going to feel greasy and heavy and buildup is going to start happening. And then you're going to think that the product is too heavy for your hair. So just use it in moderation. If you are someone that has damaged hair, okay, from heat styling, like I said, chemical treatments, coconut oil will definitely help to repair your hair. So definitely um, use it for that. If you are someone that has are dealing with split ends, I don't really like to recommend using a product for split ends because I do not believe they can be repaired. Typically, if your ends are split, you will need to get a trim. If you notice that your split ends are dry, that could, I mean, <laughs> if the ends of your hair are dry, that could lead to split ends. So then I would definitely suggest keeping your ends moisturized to prevent those split ends, to prevent further dryness. If you have dandruff or dry scalp, coconut oil will help you as well. So how would you use coconut oil? If you were interested, if this is something that you think can help your hair. So here's a few ways you can use it. You can add it to your dry hair before you shampoo. Okay. This is just going to protect your hair from losing some natural oils. You can do a deep conditioning, mix your coconut oil with your favorite conditioner. I always say this. You do not have to always go out and buy new products. <laughs> you can use what you have. Take your favorite conditioner, add some coconut oil to it and create your own deep conditioning treatment. Okay. Cause really that's what you're doing. Um, you'll apply it to your hair while it's damp, cover with a shower cap, sit under a heated dryer, cover it with a warm towel. We also have some, um, heated caps that you can put in the microwave and then you put on your hair it also helps with heat that way. Um, and also as a scalp treatment, so you can put massage coconut oil directly onto your scalp to help with dryness and flakes. Okay. All right. So moving on to the next one is shea butter. So you're going to get a lot of deep moisturize, a lot of deep moisturizing from shea butter. You're going to get your shine. It's going to help with scalp irritation. So kind of the same thing as with coconut oil. Here's the thing. If you again are someone that's a type three or type four hair, and your hair is on the drier side and you want some intense moisture. Like you really want something that's going to get in there <laughs> and really moisturize your hair. You can use shea butter, especially if you have hair that's thick, if you have hair that's dry and brittle, shea butter is going to be your friend. Okay. Now, um, damaged hair, frizzy hair. If you have scalp issues again, like I said, and then protective styles. So let me kind of explain that a little bit. So damaged hair again, I'm, a lot of these are going to overlap. Okay. So you pick which one you think will work for you. So I said that coconut oil will work for damaged hair. Well, so will shea butter, but you have to you choose your products wisely based on your needs, what you can afford or what you have available to you. Okay. One is not better than the other. It just depends on what you need. So again, damaged hair will benefit from shea butter. 
Um, damaged hair is hair that is damaged from heat styling, chemical treatments, relaxers, color treatments, okay? Um, shea butter has a lot of reparative properties. Of course, we know it's all natural. It helps to nourish and strengthen the hair, reducing further damage. I would recommend purchasing your shea butter from a reputable source because you want to get 100% um, shea butter. So you know that shea butter comes in different forms. There's not one, to me, there's not one better form than the other. Some are just easier to work with. Usage tips. So how do we use shea butter? Pretty much the same as we would use the coconut oil. You can do a leave-in conditioner, adding it to your, um, after you shampoo and condition your hair, you can add shea butter. A lot of people use it that way. And you can do a deep conditioning treatment, same process. Add it with um, your other oils or butters. You can add it um, after you do your regular conditioner and then just kind of do it with your heat cap or your shower cap. You can use it as a daily moisturizer. A lot of my naturals swear by shea butter as a daily moisturizer, especially the ladies that wear like twist outs and braids and a lot of natural hairstyles. It can be, um, again, used as a scalp treatment. You know you can use shea butter from head to toe, honey. So we... <laughs> We are all about the shea butter. Now, I didn't, I don't know about y'all, but I did not grow up in a house with um, <laughs> a household that used shea butter. My mom used good old Vaseline, <laughs> good old Vaseline and talcum powder. And I know I'm kind of getting off topic here, but I'm just thinking about like how we moisturized our skin as a child. And a lot of times we moisturize our hair with Vaseline too, honey, if that's all we had. <laughs> so, anyway, back on topic, back on topic. Stay focused, stay focused. So we're on number three, which is aloe vera, okay? And this is one of my favorite ingredients. It soothes the scalp. It helps to promote hair growth. It's a great natural conditioner for your hair. It's a great scalp treatment it's great as a leave-in uh spray so we love 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 aloe vera one of our top selling products which is the spray and go leave-in conditioning mist which i now that i have been thinking about it i think i'm going to rebrand a lot of my products um because it's really a hydrating mist and i know it has conditioning mist on the bottle and it does have conditioning properties but more so it is a hydrating mist okay so aloe vera helps to balance oil production on the scalp making it ideal for those if, who have oily hair so typically people who have oily hair have an overproduction of sebum on the scalp and aloe vera can kind of help to um, balance that oil production. It will cleanse the scalp without stripping it of the natural oils. If you are someone that has fine or thin hair and you really just want something that's lightweight to moisturize your hair and condition it without weighing it down, aloe vera is going to definitely be for you. And it's not for one specific hair type, any hair type from type one to type four, it doesn't matter you will find benefits in using um, aloe vera, especially for hydration, especially if you are dealing with dryness or you just wanna refresh your style. So say if you're wearing um, a protective style, if you're wearing braids and really it's, it's hard to get to your scalp and you just wanna spray it with something to kind of soothe it or get that cooling sensation, aloe vera is going to be your friend, okay? Um, if you're someone with dry and brittle hair, or if you are trying to use something to help promote hair growth, aloe vera is definitely good for that. Okay. So how would we use it? How would we use aloe vera, um, for the issues that I just described? So a scalp treatment. Now you can get pure aloe vera gel directly from the leaf. Okay. You can get aloe vera gel from your local health food store. Anytime you're buying natural ingredients, I would always suggest going to your health food store if you have one near you. Um, stay away from buying a lot of stuff off Amazon. Not that Amazon is bad because, you know, it is what it is. But there are a lot of counterfeits. There are a lot of fake uh, 
products, a lot of fake companies selling products that you may think are you're getting 100% natural and you're really not. So if you're not vetting your suppliers and you're ordering online, you could end up with something that is not what it says it is. Okay, which could further frustrate your process. Okay, so always recommend going to your health food store first if you have one near you or if you can order from there. Um, so leave in conditioner. Aloe vera is good for that. You can mix your aloe vera with a few drops of an essential oil and some water to create like your own spray, your own hair mask. You can mix aloe vera with other ingredients again, like coconut oil. We talked earlier, coconut oil and aloe vera gel go really well together to create a natural hair mask. Um, an anti-frizz treatment. If you're someone that's struggling a lot with frizz, aloe vera is going to be good for that. Ingredient number four is another favorite of mine, and this is black castor oil or Jamaican black castor oil. Okay. So why do we love black castor oil? Well, because it is a staple. It is, um, in most people's hair care regimen. Okay. Um, so the benefits, it strengthens hair, promotes growth, and it thickens hair as well. So I would only suggest castor oil to those that have thicker textures. If you have thin or fine hair, uh, castor oil is just really going to weigh your hair down. You can still get the benefits. Just understand if you use it, use it in moderation, and you may have to rinse it out once you're done. Okay. Um, it's like I said, very thick consistency. It's one of the thicker of all the oils um, that we typically know about for our hair health. Um, but it's a very healing oil. Like I said, this is another one of my favorites. I use castor oil on my skin a lot because of all of the healing properties that it has. So that if you can use it on your skin, nine times out of 10, you can use it on your scalp. It'll fiddle <laughs> if it will heal your skin it will heal your scalp because scalp is skin, right? So if you are wanting hair growth and thickness, we know uh, castor oil is talked about a lot for that. If you are dealing with hair loss, it can help to strengthen your follicles, okay? And to reduce breakage, which will help to promote the new growth or helps with length retention. Scalp issues, again, uh, damaged hair, hair that's been damaged from, again, heat styling, chemical treatments, environmental factors. It has so many reparative properties that castor oil will just about fix. <laughs> if used consistently, okay, let me throw that, throw that in, just about any hair concern that you have. Um, the only other thing is I would not use castor oil frequently. A small amount goes a long way. Um, because it can, it can clog your pores. Okay. It can cause a lot of buildup. So I would not use castor oil every day. And then if you do feel like you want to use it more frequently, just dilute it with a thinner oil. So if you have something like, um, olive oil, you can, um, dilute your castor oil with that. You can also use castor oil as a hot oil treatment. You would just warm it up. Not in the microwave, guys. <laughs> Take your castor oil and do the double boiler method. You don't want it to get too hot. A lot of these oils um, are volatile. So if you heat them up too much, they could lose some of their properties. Um, castor oil, you should be fine. I just would never heat any oil up in the microwave. And then if you do warm it up, either just sit it in a pot of, of hot water or warm it up very slowly using the double boiler method in a glass container, okay? Not even plastic, glass, <laughs> okay? Um, you can do a leave-in moisturizer. Again, you can mix it with other oils like I said earlier. Avocado oil, all right? This is another one of my favorite. Like I listed all of my favorite oils. <laughs> I listed most of my favorites. Now, I love avocado oil because I love avocados. They are definitely a versatile fruit. If you didn't know, avocados are a fruit that you can um, eat and you can get all the nutrients from when you eat it and from when you use the oil or when you actually use the avocados themselves. Okay. Now, avocados are rich in nutrients that penetrate the hair shaft as well. 
and enhances elasticity. Let's uh, quickly go through some of the hair types that can benefit from avocado oil. Again, all of our type three and type four hair types, this helps to, avocado oil helps to de define your curls, enhance or reduce frizz, and then provide some deep moisture without weighing your hair down. So if you are not a fan of coconut oil, um, if you are not a fan of heavy butters like shea butter, I would say avocado oil would be your next best thing. If you want just an oil that you can use um, to help with moisture and locking in um, a, an oil that you could use to lock in moisture. Uh, if you have a hair type that's more prone to dryness, again, you'll definitely want to reach for avocado oil. And you can find avocado oils in your grocery store. Don't go for the one that's the cheapest. I mean, on some of these, you're going to have to splurge. You're just going to have to just have to pay that coin because a lot of these oils, <laughs> a lot of these oils, even though they look, you read the label, you look at where they uh, originate from. There'll be like several different countries. You want your oils to come from one place. If you want to do a, um, an experiment, go to, next time you go to the grocery store, look at olive oil. If you pick up a bottle of olive oil and you turn over to the ingredients it's probably going to list four or five countries that those olives were sourced from to make that a uh, batch of olive oil you want your ingredients or your you know your ingredients to come from one place okay you don't want stuff sourced from all over the place right and then a lot of the times it isn't a hundred percent so you have to again read your labels it should say 100% avocado oil, 100% whatever oil, not a blend, not some avocado oil and a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of, um, what is that oil that they, canola oil. Like you don't want to eat any, eat or use canola oil on your hair. Okay. So make sure you are checking your labels. If you have to spend a little more, do that. If you cannot, then you have to bump it back down to coconut oil. Coconut oil is a little less expensive than a good quality avocado oil. Okay. <laughs> I hope that all makes sense. I know there's a lot of information, but hair conditions like damaged hair, frizziness, scalp issues, avocado oil is going to help for that. How you would use it is kind of the same as we talked about for the cast. I mean, for the coconut oil, this oil works for most hair types. So you should be fine. Uh, using it as a pre-poo or pre-shampoo treatment. Uh, you can use it as a deep conditioner or leave-in conditioner, hot oil treatment, scalp massage. You can add some essential oil to it. If you don't have any essential oils, we're going to get to an essential oil that I recommend everybody should have in their medicine cabinet or in your hair care arsenal or wherever you keep your stuff. There is an, an essential oil that, excuse me, I don't know why I'm belching so much. There is an essential oil that I believe everyone should have. Next ingredient. So we're at number six and this is not an oil at all. Okay. I wrote a wonderful blog post about the um, ingredient honey as it pertains to hair health. And I will link it in the comments once we are done um, with tonight's live, but go check that out. I think you'll get some great information. I think that honey is probably one of the best ingredients for your scalp. Okay. For your scalp, especially if you are dealing with scalp issues that are causing your hair loss, right? Um, it's also a natural humectant, which means it's going to help pull in moisture. It helps to retain moisture. And then of course it helps to add shine. Okay. So there's a lot of hair types, a lot of scalp issues that will benefit from using honey. The important thing is that you get unheated honey and you don't get, man, I meant to get it. You don't get that honey that has the bear with the little pop top on the top. You don't get that. You need to get 
The best type of honey to get is honey that is sourced in your area where you live. So if you have dry and brittle hair, honey is going to help with that. All hair types can benefit from, from honey, but if you are someone that colors your hair, you have color treated hair, definitely uh, use honey for that. If your hair is really thick, honey is going to be great at moisturizing your hair and giving your hair a natural shine. Um, any kind of damage, dandruff and scalp issues. So this is the fun part. How do we use, how do we use honey for our hair? Um, hair masks. That's, this is the best, absolute best way to use honey, a hair mask. So you would mix it with, we just talked about avocado oil. You can mix honey with avocados. Okay. Fresh avocados, or they have to be ripe, right? Cause you have to be able to mash it. You can use yogurt, regular plain Greek yogurt, nothing with sugar and additives and fruit in it. You want plain Greek yogurt. You can mix that with your honey. That actually sounds like something you would eat, right? Um, or olive oil. You can mix your honey with olive oil or any oil that you have at home. And this will help to create a deep conditioning hair mask. All right. So you would uh, the same way, apply it to damp hair, cover it with a shower cap. You leave it on for at least 45 minutes. If you can do it longer, do it longer. And then you will want to rinse it out. Now the question might be, isn't this going to make my hair sticky? It's not. You can go into your kitchen right now, get some honey. Get maybe like a little spoon of it. You don't want to waste this, especially if you got good honey, mix it with some oil, stir it up and you put it between your fingers. It's not sticky at all. It loses those sticky properties. Once you mix it with an oil, you can use honey as a conditioning booster. So you can add it to your favorite conditioner, a leave in treatment. If you dilute honey with water and you just spray it on your scalp or on the ends of your hair, it's great that way too. It is not sticky once you mix it. Um, and then you can mix honey with a few drops of your favorite essential oil. You can help use that to help with any dandruff itchiness or irritation. Okay. I also recommend um, if you purchase any of the 180 collection hair oil. So this is the cinnamon mint scalp oil. If you are dealing with uh, scalp issues, itchy, irritated scalp, take about a tablespoon or two of honey, equal amounts of the oil, mix it together and you can massage it into your scalp and let that be like your pre shampoo treatment. So if you know it's a wash day, you're getting ready to shampoo and condition your hair. You'll use that on your scalp and then you um, do your normal shampoo and conditioning rinse out. Okay. So tea tree oil, so many benefits outside of just your hair and skin. You can use tea tree oil if you have funguses or I won't get into all the things, but this is definitely something that you want because it is an antimicrobial. It is going to get rid of the bacteria, the fungus, whatever the bad stuff is, is going to help remove it. It's going to soothe your scalp. A lot of time your itchiness and your irritation of your scalp is due to, um, it's due to fungus or overgrowth of bacteria and things like that. And so it also helps to reduce dandruff. Um, so if you have oily hair, tea tree can help to reduce or regulate the production of excess oil on the scalp. If you have fine hair, hair that easily gets weighed down by products, tea tree oil is a lightweight solution for you to keep your scalp clean and healthy without adding excess weight or without your hair being weighed down. Okay. Um, so what hair conditions does tea tree help with just about all of them? Okay. So itchy scalp, dandruff, scalp psoriasis, alopecia with hair loss. Um, if you are dealing with traction alopecia or there's one other type, uh, tea tree oil is not a cure for alopecia, but it does help to create a healthy scalp environment. All right. And that's going to give your hair a better opportunity to grow because we know a healthy scalp leads to healthy hair. Um, if you have dry scalp, if you have product buildup, okay, because not you, we can't always shampoo our scalp, 
when we have oil buildup. I understand that. So especially someone, if you wear braids or um, protective styles a lot, it's not always feasible to wash, like shampoo your scalp. So if you have product buildup and you're dealing with a lot of itchiness and irritation because it's time to shampoo your hair and you just don't have time or you're not able to, then tea tree oil with some aloe vera, spray that scalp down and you should be good to go. Spray the scalp down and then maybe use a damp cloth to kind of wipe, you know, to get to lift some of that dirt and um, build up off your scalp. But just keep doing that and I promise you, you're going to get that tingly sensation. Your scalp is going to feel fresh and clean. Um, and you can do that as often as you need to. You may need to go back through, you know, your scalp and add like a lightweight oil or a lightweight moisturizer just to kind of restore some of the moisture. But tea tree is definitely going to help with that. Um, you can add it to your shampoo. Okay. This is one of my favorite things to do. Remember when you shampoo, you shampoo your scalp. We really, the, the dirtiest part is generally the scalp, especially if you use a lot of scalp oils, a lot of, if you put a lot of products on your scalp, you want to make sure you are shampooing your scalp, focusing on your scalp when you shampoo. Adding tea tree oil to your shampoo will help to give you that extra cleanliness and that a clean, cool feeling that we like with tea tree oil or peppermint oil is another good example. Um, DIY dandruff treatment. So you'll mix again, tea tree oil with aloe vera gel. Everything that I'm listing in this video can be used together. I wouldn't mix all 10 of these together, <laughs> but you find two or three that you think really will help you mix them, experiment. The great thing about finding products that work for your hair is the experimentation. Okay. But you don't want to be experimenting and wasting your time and money on products that are not suited for your hair type. So that's why I'm doing this video so that as you look at some of these ingredients, you can determine, well, yeah, that's probably going to be too heavy for my hair or no, I think I tried that already. I didn't really like it or I don't like the way that smells or you can find two or three of the things that we're talking about tonight and create your own little um, concoction, okay? Because, you know, even though I sell products and make all natural products, I do understand and I do believe in using what you already have, okay? I know that's probably crazy to say, to say that for someone who makes and sells hair care products for a living, but I think it's fair um, to also teach people how to use what they already have and you can really get a lot of the benefits from your own kitchen. Um, but also the last thing about tea tree oil is a anti-itch spray. So you can combine, combine tea tree oil with any, with water or any hydrosol. So a hydrosol is something like rose water, lavender water, any type of um, watery ingredient that has a floral essence to it. So sometimes in some stores or grocery stores, you may see different types of water that have a flower essence um, in the name. So you can mix your tea tree oil with those. Those end up smelling really, really good. I would definitely try that. Jojoba oil. How many of you know how to say jojoba oil? It is not jojoba. <laughs> I just learned this probably about six years ago, so I am not judging. But jojoba oil is amazing because it mimics the natural sebum, the natural oil on your scalp is non-greasy and it conditions the hair. It gives you also this wonderful natural sheen to your hair, okay? Wonderful natural sheen. Um, now, jojoba oil is versatile and suitable for all hair types. Mo almost any um, type one through type four, again, can use this type of oil. You'll find jojoba oil in a lot of different hair products. I'm talking shampoos, conditioners, um, things of that nature. If you are really wanting the uh, positive effects of jojoba oil, I would really try to go for purchasing a small bottle. Jojoba oil is a little bit more on the expensive side. I know price is relative, it's ex me saying expensive, um, 
it may not be expensive to some people. It may be to others, but it is more expensive than a lot of the oils that we've talked about tonight. Okay. Um, especially a good quality. Jojoba oil is lightweight, closely resembles a natural oil on your scalp. I mentioned that it's good for fine hair because it's lightweight. It's good for dry hair. It's good for all hair types. It's good for many hair conditions, dry, itchy scalp, dandruff. It does help with hair growth. Okay. So it helps to maintain a healthy scalp environment. So I would definitely use it if you are interested in it for that reason. It can promote, it can promote hair growth. All right. It does help to unclog your follicles to prevent buildup. So I would use jojoba oil. If you're someone that keeps your hair up in styles a long time, if you can access your scalp, I would use probably jojoba and tea tree oil or, um, jojoba and aloe vera oil to treat your scalp frequently. You can use it for scalp massages. You can use it as a leave in conditioner. You can use it as a hot oil treatment or a hair serum. So this is what you see in most hair serums in hair oils is jojoba oil. Okay. Cause it's very lightweight, very, very lightweight. And like I said, it gives your hair a natural smoothness, a natural sheen. It's just an all around great oil, especially if you are someone that wears your hair in its natural state. This is something that I would definitely um, suggest adding to your hair care regimen. Okay. So here is another one that's very, very popular. This is probably one of the most popular hair oils, um, in terms of products that you see in your beauty supply store on your hair care shelf is argan oil. Okay. Argan oil is rich in antioxidants. Another oil that's great to give your hair a beautiful shine. And it's also really good to reduce frizz. Now, if you are someone that just wants a natural shine, argan oil is going to be your best bet. Okay. Um, argan oil is not one of my favorite oils. I think there are oils that do a little bit of a better job, um, in giving you some additional nutrients and also giving shine. But I do recommend this because it's good for, um, dry and brittle hair. It has a lot of fatty acids in it. So it does help to give you some intense hydration and nourishment. Um, and it does make help to make your hair softer. I think people that use argan oil typically already have somewhat healthy hair. Um, argan oil is not a rescue, <laughs> a rescue ingredient. Okay. Not to say I don't like it. It's just not my preference, but I know there are a lot of people that swear by it. Okay. It does have a rich consistency. This is another one of those ingredients that you have to be careful when you purchase it. Okay. Because it is on the expensive side. Um, you do need to make sure that when you're buying it, you buy what it says you're getting. Okay. You're, you're getting what it says you're getting. Um, so how do we use argan oil again? You can, these is your, are your serums. These are usually the main ingredients in your serums in your leave-in conditioners. Okay. Your heat protectants are usually mostly argan oil. Okay. Um, it helps to create a barrier between your hair and the heat styling tool that you're using. All right. Um, and then of course you can use it as a scalp treatment. That would not be my first recommendation, but you can use it for that. You can leave it in your hair overnight. If that's something that you're in interested in to get more of an intense treatment. Okay. So this next ingredient is actually a supplement. And I wanted to add this because there is for me, for me, <laughs> there's a lot of controversy around biotin, good old biotin. How many of y'all have tried biotin? Here's my issue with biotin. First of all, it's promoted to strengthen hair, promote growth, improve thickness. Okay. Now I'm not saying it doesn't do that because it, it does. It's one of the B vitamins. Okay. It, this is your, um, biotin is your B7. All right. I think it's B7 and, <clears throat> um, it is beneficial for various hair types and different hair conditions. Okay. Particularly 
if you're looking to improve your hair health to improve your hair growth okay now hair types that benefit from biotin let me get through all of the the good stuff first before i start with my my rant about biotin um thin and fine hair biotin helps to strengthen and thicken hair we have heard that we've heard that biotin helps with weak and brittle hair okay so if you tried it if you try biotin what let me know what your results were so what are the hair conditions that would require biotin okay what are the the hair conditions this will be hair loss slow growth dull and lackluster hair and damaged okay so typically this is like when you look at your hair and you're like man i think i need something to help with growth or my hair is growing slow or my hair is just looking like eh, let me it's looking lackluster or it's looking dull let me um get something to kind of make my hair look a little more healthy okay biotin supplements all right let's talk about that biotin supplements are great the issue is we get enough biotin generally in the foods that we eat okay and if you take a biotin supplement and it you see and let me back up we didn't generally are not biotin deficient that's all i want to say most of the time we are not biotin deficient most of the foods that we eat and i'm going to name the foods in a minute are chocked full of biotin chock full okay i'm going to name the foods in a minute um but the other thing about biotin is that our bodies do not store it you understand what i'm saying your body does not store biotin so if you are already getting enough biotin from the foods i'm going to mention and then you purchase a supplement your body is not going to store the extra it's going to come out when you go to the bathroom okay and um, you really don't need as much as they sell you on those bottles right you get a thousand milligrams of bi biotin you don't need that much and your body cannot process that much and your body does not store that much okay um, you can do biotin infused hair products though so some shampoos and conditioners and hair masks contain biotin um, this will give you the topical benefits okay i would recommend a biotin infused product over supplementation okay if you think you want to try biotin if you think you need it then um i would say look at your diet okay that is the first place i'm going to tell you to look and the only reason is because like i said biotin is in so many of the foods we eat already it does not make sense for you to buy a supplement that only contains one thing when you can have some fresh foods that's going to give you all the biotin you need naturally plus other ingredients that your body and your hair um, are going to need okay so there is some controversy some people will tell you that topical applications are better some people will tell you taking a pill is better um but you know that's my opinion that's my truth i said what i said <laughs> you know what i'm saying i i've tried biotin before myself and i did not see any results that doesn't mean it doesn't work i just understand some of the science behind it okay um, but if you want to have create a hair care routine with biotin you can use like i said biotin biotin infused products these are shampoos and your conditioners you can apply a leave-in conditioner that may have some biotin in it if you want to take a supplement i would say take it at night again um, refer to your health care provider because you all know that i am not a medical professional um, but i do make some suggestions um, a biotin rich hair mask would also be beneficial a couple times a month I would definitely do that if that's something you are interested in now another way you can tell if you are getting enough biotin is to start um, tracking your food and you can use apps like my fitness pal 
And then, so there's usually in most of those apps, there's a section that tracks your micronutrients or it tracks your, um, your vitamins and your uh, minerals that you're getting from the food you're eating. So if you track your, your diet for a week, um, and B7 is the, is the vitamin that you're going to look for, see how much you're getting in comparison to what you need. Okay. And so I'm going to list some of the foods here that are rich in biotin. And I want you to focus on maybe eating more of these foods before supplementing because supplements can also be a disappointment if you are not getting what it says you're getting. Okay, so eggs, who all eats eggs? Eggs is gonna be one of the best sources of biotin, okay, and protein. So these are two things that your hair needs for health. You need protein, you need biotin. Eggs are in there. If you don't eat eggs, nuts and seeds, okay? Almonds, walnuts, pecans, peanuts are all excellent sources of biotin. Sunflower seeds, chia seeds. These are things you can put in your salad and your smoothie. Um, what else? Fish, if you are a salmon lover, which I am not. I do not like salmon. But it's high in biotin. <laughs> so are sardines, okay? Um, and then you also get your omega-3 fatty acids, which, which are also beneficial for hair health. Um, if you are a meat eater, I know there's, there may be some vegetarians on here, um, but liver um, is one of the highest sources of vitamin, uh, biotin, um, organic or other organ meats, excuse me, like kidney, which I don't even know why I put that on my notes because while I would never tell anybody to eat kidney, <laughs> but if that's what you like, hey, that's what you like. Um, but organ meats are definitely higher in biotin. And then pork and chicken can contribute. I wouldn't lean heavily on pork and chicken for biotin. Okay. But dairy, if you're someone that can eat and process dairy, milk, cheese, and yogurt. Okay. Whole grains, whole wheat, like oatmeal, barley, plant. These are good plant sources of biotin. Vegetables, Sweet potatoes, potatoes, I love potatoes. We had baked potatoes for dinner tonight. These are other biotin rich vegetables. And then you got your spinach, your broccoli, your cauliflower. If you are a fruit lover, bananas, avocados are pure, provide pure biotin along with all the other essential nutrients, okay? And then here's one that I do not eat, mushrooms. <laughs> But particularly white mushrooms are a very good source of biotin. Now, with all of them good foods I just named, why would you ever need a supplement? Eat these things and drink some water. I know there are some um, nutrients that are a little bit more difficult to get and it is better to supplement with them. Um, but again, our body doesn't store biotin and we're rarely ever deficient. And to know if you're deficient, or not, the only way to really know if you're deficient is to get blood work done, okay? And I would recommend getting blood work done by a naturopath or a holistic doctor so they can actually tell you um, the things that you are, you know, deficient in. Okay, Whew, I said a lot about biotin. I'm off of my soapbox on biotin. But one other thing before I, before I end with that, um, so you can do like a scrambled egg breakfast. If you're, again, we're still talking about if you want to incorporate biotin in your diet, do a scrambled egg or omelet with spinach and mushrooms, a bowl of oatmeal topped with nuts and seeds. That's all the biotin you need in one meal. Okay. For lunch, you can have a salad with chicken, salmon, avocado, your leafy green vegetables. You can make a sandwich with the whole grain bread like we were talking about, turkey, a side of yogurt. Like there's ways you can make your own hair care diet. Your so any questions on biotin? Whew, I'm done for real. I'm done for real, for real. All right, so I think we are pretty much done. I gave you all 10 ingredients to um, improve your hair health. Um, if you have any additional questions, now is the time to link them below. Remember, out of the 10 ingredients that I discussed today, pick one, pick two, no more than three, and start there. Experiment. 
Okay, and then one last thing before we go, if you have not shopped the website, it's 180hair.com. That's 180hair.com, okay? Be sure to check out the products there. And I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me as we get through all these ingredients. And I will see you all next Thursday. Thank you so much. Um, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Y'all stay safe. Eat lots of good food. Um, make sure you put some vegetables on your plate, some leafy green vegetables. <laughs> when you're eating all that good barbecue or them ribs or whatever you're going to eat, tell them to put you a little side, a little side salad. Get your little side salad on that plate. <laughs> uh, and send me a picture. Send me a picture of your, your uh, leafy greens on your plate. Get your biotin that way, okay? All right, thank you all again so much for joining and I will see you next Thursday.